This is local news that matters. You're watching WAWV News at Noon. What's being called the most ambitious vaccine distribution underway now. We'll tell you how that affects our local area. And the Vigo County School Corporation has made plans on how and when students will return to in-person learning. Also, Indiana ranks 38th in America for teacher pay. We have details on a report released on how to improve teacher salaries. Well, good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Nicole Christine. Local hospitals and health officials announced how they plan to handle what's being called the most ambitious vaccine distribution America has seen. The first shipment of COVID-19 vaccines set to arrive at Union, Terre Haute Regional, and Good Samaritan Hospitals Thursday. Now, each hospital will receive just under 1,000 doses of Pfizer's vaccine. Vaccinations in Knox County set to begin Thursday with Vigo County distribution beginning Friday. Healthcare workers will schedule vaccinations through Zotac a website used when they schedule COVID-19 tests. Vigo and Knox County Hospitals will also be responsible for vaccinating health care workers in surrounding counties. Vigo County Health Officer Dr. Darren Brucken says many may believe the vaccine signals an end to the pandemic, but precautions must still be taken. Give up your holiday season because now is the wrong time to let down your guards and start celebrating and saying this is over. This is by no anywhere close by no stretch you know, over for us. So we all have a very shared apprehension. Of course, we're excited about the vaccine uh, physically being here, uh, but these are baby steps right now and people are going to have to be vigilant. Long-term care employees and patients will also be among the first to receive the vaccine. Now, as that Pfizer vaccine continues to roll out, the FDA is meeting Thursday to discuss the second possible vaccine coming from Moderna. Andrew Dimbert has more. It's a major milestone in the fight against COVID-19. Three, two, one, vaccinate. <laughs> first coronavirus vaccinations now being distributed across the country from coast to coast, frontline workers, doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals who have been fighting the spread of the virus for nearly a year, rolling up their sleeves and getting their shots. I am the first person to take the vaccine, so <laughs> Considered the most ambitious vaccination campaign in our nation's history, FedEx and UPS delivering those first doses of the Pfizer medication across all 50 states. And later this week, another vaccine is expected to hit the ground running. The FDA holding a hearing with Moderna on Thursday before possibly giving the company emergency use authorization for its deployment. The life-saving vaccine efforts bringing hope to the country desperately trying to slow the spread of the pandemic. But the reality is sobering. More than 300,000 American lives have been lost from COVID-19. The grim new numbers come with a new CDC projection. As many as 362,000 deaths by January 2nd. That's the worst public health catastrophe in 102 years since the 1918 pandemic. The fatality rate is still spiraling out of control. 17,000 in the past seven days. That's 101 Americans an hour. Friday, the deadliest day of the pandemic, 3,309 lives lost. Healthcare heroes like ICU nurse Sandra Lindsay are urging citizens to do their part. Don't hesitate. I have seen the other side. It's dark. Please take the vaccine. Please listen to the signs. And an ABC News poll shows 80% of Americans say they want to get the shot, but some saying they would like to wait. Well, a woman who police say was killed in a weekend shooting has been identified. Terre Haute police say 27-year-old Kristen Gregg was shot in her home in the 1400 block of Grand Avenue just before 3 p.m. Saturday. She was later pronounced dead at the hospital. According to Terre Haute Police Chief Sean Keen, 33-year-old Stephen Rickard of Terre Haute is facing charges of reckless homicide, serious violent felon in possession of a firearm, and possession of meth in connection to this deadly shooting. And a Terre Haute man is facing charges in Park County after authorities say he led them on a high-speed chase. It began during a traffic stop on U.S. 36 Saturday morning. That's when officials say 22-year-old Matthew Schludecker took off, leading police on that pursuit, which reached speeds of more than 100 miles an hour. Authorities say that chase ended when his vehicle crashed at the 63 southbound ramp. 
And no life-threatening injuries were reported in an I-70 wreck that shut down the interstate for hours Monday. A woman was sent to an Indianapolis hospital after three people were ejected from a semi-tractor trailer. State Police Sergeant Matt Ames says the incident happened Monday afternoon near mile marker 14 near Terre Haute. He says a semi-truck had a malfunction with its trailer and the semi lost control. It overturned while the trailer disconnected. Ames says a man, woman, and juvenile were thrown from the truck. The man and juvenile were taken to local hospitals. Well, the Vigo County School Corporation has announced plans for students to return to in-person learning. This will begin Monday, January 4th. Elementary students who chose the traditional model will have five days of in-person instruction. High school and middle school students will use that cohort system Tuesday through Friday, and Mondays will remain a remote learning day. School officials point to lower community spread of COVID-19 as a reason for the return. Moving forward, leaders say they hope to make decisions on a school-by-school -school basis. What's a particular elementary school experiencing? What's a middle school experiencing? What's a high school experiencing? And then make those decisions as to the educational model. We would strive not to take the district back to full remote for everybody. The school corporation says remote learning options will remain available for any student who needs them. Well, Indiana is 38th in the country for starting and average teacher salaries, last among our neighboring states. A state commission found Indiana needs to free up $600 million to stay competitive. They spent two years studying the topic. This 83-page report released Monday suggests 37 ways to fix the teacher compensation problem. The goal, raise average teacher pay by $7,000 to $60,000 and starting teacher pay to 40000 Teachers and education advocates met at the State House a year ago calling for these pay increases. The governor and legislators vowed to prioritize the issue, but that was before the pandemic hit. Now, this is not something believed to change overnight. If the legislature waits, uh, you're talking four and five years before you see the full impact uh, of additional revenues coming to schools. And the commission also suggested more districts put school referendums on future ballots. The entire press conference available to watch on our website, mywabashvalley.com. Well, since the school year began, teachers in Vigo County have been unable to see their students as often as they would like. So Meadows Elementary School found an opportunity to spread holiday cheer and see children for one last time before the end of the year. Staff from Meadows Elementary held a Christmas parade that went around their school's neighborhood, handing out holiday food bags and treats Monday. Teachers and staff prepared for this event for weeks. Many people stepped in to provide the necessary help to make sure the parade happened, and they even managed to get Santa and Miss his claws in on the fun. One educator says while the Christmas cheer was great, it was most important to visit with her students. It's been extremely challenging not to see them every day. Teachers work so much better when we're with them one on one. Um, and so it's been challenging trying to teach over a computer and that's just not the best way to learn. So we miss them dearly and hope that we get to work with them in person soon. And Meadows principal Cassandra Cook says by having this Christmas raid, they were able to make sure those students know that their teachers love and miss them. And as we approach International Women's Month in March, WTWO and WAWV want to recognize the great contribution women have made not only to our nation, but to our local communities. That's why we're inviting you to nominate a remarkable woman in your life. In March, we'll highlight four local women who will be considered for Next Star's 2021 Woman of the Year Award. Now, applications end December 20th, so make sure to get those in. And to nominate a woman, you can head to our website, mywabashvalley.com. Well, the holidays are here, and some Christmas songs are popping back up on the charts. One for the first time in decades. We'll tell you what's happening in Hollywood coming up. Closed captioning is brought to you by Terre Haute Chevrolet. It's more than just a Chevrolet. It's Terre Haute Chevrolet.